I get asked all the time, James, how do I just simply record my screen to do a demo or to make a video? Well, it's super simple with OBS Studio, which is the open broadcast software studio for Mac, Windows, or Linux, which is really awesome. It's completely free, takes seconds to get set up. With the right settings, you'll be off capturing your desktop or your webcam or both and also your audio. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how to do that. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another video, this time talking about how to record your screen and your audio and your webcam. You can mix all of those using OBS Studio. I've been using OBS Studio to stream to Twitch and make my videos here on YouTube for years at this point. It's super simple and easy to set up, so let's check it out. All right, so first things first, what you need to do is go to obsproject.com and this is the Open Broadcaster Software Studio. Uh, it's really, really nice. It's completely free and open source for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So wherever you're looking to record, you can totally just put it right here. Now, what's nice about it is that, yes, you can totally stream to Twitch and YouTube and other places like Facebook, but you can also use it to configure doing all sorts of audio mixing and video mixing and just record locally too. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is just download, you know, whatever version you want and install it. And it's just a simple executable and it'll just install it right away. I've already installed it here, so we're good to go. There are these nice quick starts uh, and there's a great forums and discord community and overview, but it kind of gives you everything you need here. So let's open up OBS, here it is. And this is what it looks like. The UI hasn't changed that dramatically over the years, which is a good thing because a lot of the videos that you'll find online are gonna be very applicable to what you're doing here. Now, generally there are a few different things such as profiles. So you can see I actually have a bunch of different profiles here, but those are gonna be my recording settings, my stream settings, and anything that I set up in the settings themselves. Um, and you can import those and export those. Then there are scene collections. And here I have a bunch of different scenes. Uh, and the scene collections are, are sort of things that you transition to. So one might be your webcam, one might be your desktop, one might be uh, something else uh, that you have, another monitor, or a screen, anything like that, or chat room or whatever you wanna have. But by default, you're on untitled and untitled. So I've just simply you know, created a new one so it's completely blank. So what I wanna show you down here is that you have scenes and sources and audio mixers. Those are gonna be the three main panels on the bottom that you have, and you'll have one scene by default. So actually it's displaying a scene, there's just no sources in it at all. And we'll get to sources here in a little bit, but as you can see by these icons, these are gonna be things like images, websites, cameras, um, and your desktop too. Over here, you'll see all of your controls. You'll see start streaming, start recording. That's the important one. Start virtual camera. This is a newer feature that I believe is only available on Windows, but you know, install it on Mac or Linux and double check it. But that enables you to set this scene as a webcam. So if you're in Teams or Zoom or other software, you can actually make your specific output here, your webcam that's displayed to people. There's a studio mode. I'm not gonna talk about that here. That's more for live streaming and needing to change things on demand. And then there are settings. Settings are really important and I like to just go in and make sure that I am talking specifically about the settings that I recommend for doing video recording and I also do these for streaming too. Under general, I pretty much leave everything the same. Under stream, this is where you would connect your account if you wanted to or you'd have none here specifically. Totally fine, you don't need to worry about that. Then you wanna to go to output. Now output here, uh, these are the default settings which is 2500 kilobits per second. I record at 3200, you could also do like 4800. This is kind of the quality uh, that you wanna have on your video bit rate. I keep things simple, I don't ever go to advance, but you know something like 4800 is gonna be really good for screen recordings. Uh, 3200 is what I use, so it's actually really good for screen recordings too. Uh, and you know everything else I leave the same. The bit rate audio, I don't change. The encoder, if you have a nice graphics card, you'll wanna use the NVENIC hardware encoder, that's gonna be more optimized. If you don't have one, you're just gonna see software and it'll default here. And that's totally fine, it just means that when it's recording and processing, it's gonna require more CPU usage. 
Over here, you can specify your recording path, so it'll default to your videos folder. And then over here, there are a few different settings. Um, I actually just usually set it as same as stream, which means whatever bit rate and audio I have here is gonna be the same recording. Now, you have a few options over here for the recording format. I personally prefer MP4. Uh, however, the default is MKV. If you select MKV, it will also output an MP4 in post-production. Um, but the nice thing with MKV is it does allow you to pause while you're recording. Now, I don't ever pause, and I just like a simple MP4 and not having to mux or do anything like that. So what I do here is I simply just do an MP4 and I'm good to go. Uh, like it says here, if you wanna record multiple audio tracks, you can do MKV and Remux and all this stuff. That's way too complicated for me. I prefer just an MP4, keep it simple, because then I just know whatever my settings are here is what I'll be delivering to wherever I'm putting the video, in a PowerPoint presentation, uploading it to YouTube, or in a presentation. Now next up is gonna be audio. This is super important. I leave everything as the defaults. Um, this is nice because these are global audio devices. These global audio devices will be turned on for every single scene that comes up over here. Uh, you can add an audio source separately. However, I always like to have my microphone selected on every single <laughs> scene automatically and mute it myself. Now notice here that there are, you can add up to four of these microphones. So if you want to have multiple sources, you could do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my microphone here, which is my default um, audio mixer that I have. And then also, if you wanna record your desktop audio, you would select wherever you're hearing the audio. So for example, those would be my speakers. But I don't like to record my desktop audio if there's bleeps or bloops. Uh, I don't wanna do that. But if you are specifically recording another video or you need audio playback, make sure that you select that here. Now you can always mute these as well and turn them on and off on demand. So let's just leave them both on just, just so we can show that off. The other thing over here is you wanna go over to video. Now I highly recommend that you set your base canvas and your output scaled resolution, which will be your video, to the same resolution. Now I also highly recommend that you just set everything to 1920 by 1080. This is gonna be your default, and unless you wanna record in 4K, you can set that all up, but be aware that you're then recording in 4K, whatever you have. But I'm gonna set my base canvas resolution to 1920 by 1080, and my scaled output resolution in 1920 by 1082. So that way it doesn't have to do any processing. Now here's something really important, is that we're recording in 1080p, which means that you'll also wanna set your monitor to 1080p. Whatever monitor that you want to record, set it to 1920 by 1080. Else, when you add that monitor, it's gonna be really, really big and you're gonna to have to resize it and things are gonna get really small. So it may feel a little bit awkward if you're on a 2K or a 4K monitor to record in 1920 by 1080, but I highly recommend it. It just makes it easier all in all when you're recording. And again, that's gonna be the monitor that is recorded and if you have multiple monitors, you can leave your other one that OBS is running on the same. All right, so those are all the settings over here. Literally over an output, change this to 3200, 4800. You can do some test recordings if you wanna increase the bit rate. Note that every time you increase the bit rate, it's gonna be a bigger file. I like MP4 personally. Again, I can't then pause the recording, but I've never paused a recording in my life. And of course, set up your audio here as you would if you want to record desktop and of course your microphone. If you don't want to record either, disable all of them. I leave all the sample rate, everything else, absolute the default. Hit apply, hit okay. Now what we're gonna see is a few things over here. In our audio mixer, we're gonna see our desktop audio and I can go ahead and simply mute that if I want to. I can also then note that this is my microphone. I can adjust the output. So if it looks like it's peaking really high when I talk, I can adjust it down. So it's actually gonna reduce the level just like if you were in, you know, turning up or down your microphone. Now, the other thing I can do is hit this little gear on this specific microphone and I can go to advanced audio properties. What this will enable me to do is down mix to mono if I wanted to, and you can see that there's two bars here. So instead of recording in stereo, I might want mono to be put output so I don't have left or right. And then of course, if I actually wanted to hear myself, I could monitor myself too, but I'm not gonna do that. 
There's other advanced settings in here like sync offset and other things like left and right balance. That's totally up to you if you wanna adjust those. I don't, I leave them the same. But if you do see audio drift for some reason, you can do a sync offset that will delay your microphone to synchronize with your video. Again, I haven't had to do that, but those where those settings are. Now there are other few options that I like to do on this microphone. On this specific gear, note that there's two gears, one is for my desktop audio and one is for my microphone auxiliary, is I like to go to filters on whatever microphone I'm using and set up a few filters. These filters enable OBS to process your audio in real time. So what I'll do is I'll hit add and there's two specific ones that I like, the limiter and noise suppression. These are really nice when you're recording videos because the limiter here, which I'll just leave as the default name of limiter, will limit your audio. This means if you laugh or you sneeze, it will make sure that it doesn't hurt anybody's eardrums by being really loud. It will limit your audio. I leave the defaults here as well. The other one I like is noise suppression. Noise suppression is a really nice one because it removes noise in the background. Again, I leave the default RN noise remover here. Totally good, high quality. So if you have a fan going in the background, that's totally gonna help. You can always go back to them here in filters. If you wanna turn them on and off, you don't have to delete them. You can hit this little eyeball here, which will enable and disable them. But we're gonna leave them on and use the defaults. All right. We're almost set to set up our scene. So what we're gonna do over here is leave the scene as is. We can always create more scenes as well, scene two, scene three, which means you might have a webcam scene, you might have a desktop scene, you might have a combination of the two. If you're doing videos where you want your webcam side by side, your desktop, you can set up multiple scenes. More importantly though, is you're gonna want sources and sources are shared between all scenes so you can add them to other scenes as you create them. So let's go ahead and just add our desktop. I'm gonna come in here and note that when I hit plus, I get all of these options here. I could add an audio input or output. I don't need to because I'm using the global ones here on the audio mixer. I can add a browser, a color source, game capture, image, a slideshow, a media source. I can add a scene to a scene. I can add text, a video capture, and a window capture. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna use display capture to display and capture an entire window or actual desktop display. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as the default display capture. And here I'm gonna hit okay. Now what this will show me as I pull this up is that it's gonna ask me what display do I want. Here I'm gonna choose display one, which is the display that is not um, showing OBS. And here I have a few browser tabs open. And you can also specify if you want it to capture the cursor. So if you wanna hide the cursor from your recording, you can just hide that, which is nice. I set everything to automatic, I don't touch anything, you're good to go. If I was to change this to two, you can see now I'm inside of OBS, capturing OBS, but we want screen one. All right, here it is. I literally just have my display capture. Now I can hide it by hitting this icon here. I can move it by moving it around. I can also hit this lock button, which will lock it so I can't move it anymore. That's really nice when I'm setting up multiple sources inside of OBS. Now, when I do tap on this and move it around, you can see that I can shrink it by just moving it up and down. So if I wanted it to just be like in the top left and I wanted to put other things here, I can change it up and down. I can also hold down the Alt button and I can then drag and drop any of these. And this is sort of like clipping. And you can see it's green down here to show you that it's not showing the entirety of the window. But if you wanted to hide something, for example, so you only wanted to capture the top window and you wanted to remove this, you could totally do that. You could actually clip this up and down. So there you go, you just hit Alt and you do that there. You can also right click and there's all sorts of things like transforming, like rotating, flipping horizontally, fitting to screen, centering horizontal. You can do all of these things in this menu. There's a lot of options here. It's really, really cool. That's pretty much it. No, all you're gonna do is just hit start recording. This is gonna start recording this video right on your machine. And anything that I do over here, like now you can see my mouse is gonna be captured. So if I go into this tab and I open up another montamagno.com, or if I go to uh, twitter.com, you can see here that I have all my different windows going on here. So that's really, really cool that I have all of that available to me right away.
So there we go, there's our mouse moving around as it hovers to and from, just like that. All right, so now we're capturing our display. Let's hit stop recording. You can see it's been 40 seconds or so, recording at 30 frames per second with minimal CPU usage. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead over and open a folder and go into videos. And then we'll see here, I have a bunch of other video recordings. I'm just gonna open up this one. And there it is. It is literally our capture of our display coming in at 1920 by 1080 P. Now what you're saying is, well, James, what if you want yourself on camera too? You know, I see all those YouTube videos where you have your camera on as well. Well, it's super simple. All you gotta do is come in and say video capture device. A video capture device is gonna be your webcam that you have set up. That could be USB or something else. I'm gonna hit okay to add that in. And we're gonna see all of the different sources here. Now the one that I'm gonna use is my cam link. That's the one that I have set up right here. That's me, hi everyone, how's it going? So a cam link enables me to use, in this case, my GoPro Hero 4 or a DSLR as a webcam. You might have a Logitech C920, for example, or your built-in webcam, and you would just wanna go ahead and select that. And literally, don't change anything else, you're good to go. Now I do wanna note one thing here. We can see down over here that we have our video capture device coming in as our audio source as well. We don't wanna capture that, go ahead and mute it. And if you never wanna see it again, simply come in and say hide. Then it'll just go away forever, which is super nice. And when you go into the advanced audio properties, you'll see that it's still there, but it's been hidden and it's always muted 100%. Well, here I am, and now I can go ahead and resize myself. In this case, I probably wanna actually like lock the actual display capture so that way I don't accidentally move it around and I can move myself around anywhere I want on the screen. Now in this case, it is sort of like a you know, 16 by nine ratio. So maybe I want myself to be a square. I can come in just like this and go ahead and just minimize myself to the bottom right. I can go ahead and undo that if I wanted to by moving this back over. There we go. If I wanted to, I could transform it and I could rotate myself for some reason if I really wanted to. And of course I could come in and I could always reset that transform. And now I'm back to the big one. So there we go. And I can put myself over here. Now here's some really cool things that you can do. So for example, I have this one scene where I'm set up and now I have my video, but I could create another scene. Let's call it scene two. And now I don't have any sources. I could come in and add back that display capture. Instead of setting up a new one, we'll add the existing one. And now what I can do is I can come in and I can also add the video capture device. Again, I'm gonna say add existing, and I'm gonna go ahead and add myself back over here. Pretty cool. I can now put myself in the bottom left, for example. And now what I'm able to do is toggle between these two and notice that any differences automatically fade in and out between these two, which is really, really nice. If I was to go ahead and change this to be a little bit smaller, you can see that everything fades in and out just like that, which is really, really nice. There's also scene transitions that you can set up. These are defaults, so if you wanted to, for example, just do a simple cut where it just pops over, you can do that. You can also add a slide over here, which go ahead and will slide things from left to right. And you can go ahead and set up those scene transitions. Normally I'm recording my desktop, I usually just do one, and then I do have custom transitions that you see in my videos all the time uh, that I've paid for on Fiverr. And I probably have a video somewhere that's showing you how to do that. But that's literally it. Go back over to controls, hit start recording, and you're done. Now don't worry if you accidentally hit start streaming because you're on a profile that doesn't have anything set up. Nothing will happen at all. But be careful though, if you do set up YouTube or Twitch or other sources, you don't accidentally hit start streaming. One thing that I do is I have a stream deck. Stream decks are really nice devices. If I just go ahead and show you what that looks like here, and that are from Elgato. So a stream deck is this little device that you can buy that enables you to automate things with buttons and clicks. I do this all the time when I'm recording videos and when I'm live streaming, and there's all sorts of ones, little ones, middle ones, huge ones. Now what's cool about that is that you can set up your stream deck here to change between scenes, to mute your microphone device, and even to start recording inside of OBS. That's super duper nice, so you don't actually have to press the start recording button, you can press the button on the stream deck. And that's kind of OBS in a nutshell. There's so much more that you can do with OBS, but I wanted to show you what you can do by just coming in, setting up OBS to record your desktop, audio, and webcam as well. All right, well, there you have it. It's just that easy to get started recording your desktop, 
audio from your microphone and your webcam as well. There's all sorts of things that you can do in OBS studio and there's tons of videos on YouTube. If you want me to talk a little bit more about them, let me know. I do have another video called you know, developer setup with OBS studio. I'll put it up over there and in the show notes below as well. I did it a while ago. Um, so it's still relevant if you're a developer looking kind of different setup techniques for OBS and to stream live coding. But if you have other questions, let me know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like this video. If you do like it and you want to see more of them, it helps recommend it to other people on YouTube. And if you want more videos from me, hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. And that will set you up to get notified every single time I put out a video. Thanks for watching. <music>